Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN and mom to four, and it's everybody's favorite time of the month. Much better than that other time of the month where we review an episode of TLC's famously entertaining I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant and ruin it with educational commentary. This is my new friend. He doesn't have a name yet, so if you have a great name for the overwhelmingly pink, bright bar fetus life that I have now added to the background, drop that in the comments down below. This episode is excellent. You will love it, mostly because it includes a throwback to yours truly and the the hypocritical recommendations doctors sometimes make, both on the internet and in real life. I confess, I did that. It was a bad idea. Let's get past this because we really need to move on and stop talking about my bad decisions in my own labor. This video is kindly sponsored by NordVPN. We'll hear more about them in a minute. Christy is living with her parents and raising her two-year-old son, He's Kason, so cute. as a single mother. I love that. He's just a great kid. Christy's pregnancy with Kaysen was very difficult. I was sick every day. I probably gained about 50 pounds and I just felt huge and tired. I had crazy stretch marks all over. It was pretty miserable. I can relate to that feeling, but it is also important to recognize you're growing a human. It's okay to feel different about your body and the changes happen really quickly. Sometimes that is hard to mentally adjust to. Don't be hard on yourself. Your body is doing really important work. In March of 2009, she breaks up with her boyfriend and worries when she misses a period. I took a pregnancy test and it was negative. I always used a condom. So I just figured due to stress, maybe I had missed my period and you know, the following month, my period had come back. This is a common thing that people say, I missed a period and then the next month it came back. I know that's really confusing, but you don't actually have periods in pregnancy. We've talked about this many times. You can have bleeding related to the pregnancy because of the cervix being a little bit more sensitive or bleeding related to a subchorionic hemorrhage or something like that, but not a period. It probably would not come every 30 days or whatever your normal cycle is, but if you're not paying really close attention, it may make you think, okay, this is a period, but usually there's some delineating factor if you're really marking it down and following. I won't say 100% of the time, but most of the time. Christy is taking full advantage of one of the perks of living at home, her mother's cooking. She makes really good cheeseburger macaroni. Who's ready for more? I did notice she was not watching the portions quite so much. I had gained from spring till about midsummer. 15 pounds or so. Side note, there is not macaroni and cheese like we have in the United States available easily here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I really, really miss the Cracker Barrel brand macaroni and cheese so much. Oh, that was my pregnancy craving when I was pregnant with my twins. I work at a convenience store and I'm a cashier. I also had to unload trucks and carry packs of 32 ounce strings. I had constant back pain. I was starting to notice that my eyes were starting to go a little bit, you know, blurry. I couldn't see the date. But, you know, my mom and dad wore glasses and I figured I was getting a little bit older it was gonna happen sometime. We talked about this in the historical pregnancy test video, which by the way, is an excellent video. My favorite video I've ever made. You do tend to have more eye problems in pregnancy. Dry eye, more blurry vision, vision changes might happen in pregnancy. And a lot of this is related to two things, both hormone changes as well as fluid retention. It's not usually really, really noticeable to most people, but in some people it can be really significant. It usually goes away after delivery. Christy's energy level is low, but her Christmas spirit is high. I had gone Christmas shopping on December 4th. I had worked, you know, really hard to go shopping for my son, Kaysen. But suddenly, Christy is overcome by an urgent and painful need to go to the bathroom. I was having cramps. I'm in a lot of pain very quickly. Oh, it's coming on fast and strong. Did she just have one period after the missed period or is she saying she bled the whole pregnancy? I'm confused. I need more information. Not enough information has been given to me. Called my mom into the bathroom. So I figure maybe she would know. It's really bad. I thought maybe she's got a bladder infection or something. What? Her bladder infection had a heartbeat. Alarmed by how severe Christy's pain is, oh, Teresa God. decides that they should go to the hospital. They immediately head out Excellent and leave Casey with his grandfather. On the way to the hospital, I'm driving because my mom can't see well in the night. Why? 
why would you do that? If you're in severe pain and you don't know why, or really even if you do know why, don't drive yourself to the hospital. Have someone take you or call an ambulance. And I do realize for long-term viewers, you are aware how hypocritical this is of me to say. In actuality, not an emergency and not an excuse to drive yourself to the hospital in the middle of the night while you're in labor. I confess, I did that. Let's get past this because we really need to move on and stop talking about my bad decisions in my own labor. Don't drive yourself to the hospital, especially if you are in labor. True or false, there can be up to six cups of amniotic fluid that surround a full-term baby in the womb. Your answer when we return. Thank you to the wonderful sponsor of today's video, NordVPN. You wouldn't have sex on a one night stand without using a condom because you watch my videos and you know that's how to protect yourself. So why are you using public Wi-Fi without a VPN? VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. This is essentially a tunnel to protect your identity, information, and encrypt your data so that you can safely use public Wi-Fi. NordVPN is super easy to use, arguably easier than the type of protection we discussed earlier, and that itself is relatively easy. Easy. With one click, you can connect on any major platform. I even use it on my iPhone. And then you're encrypted and protected from nasty viruses or hackers trying to steal your data or IP address. If you'd like to protect yourself with NordVPN and support my channel in the process, you can get a two-year membership with a month free at a huge discount by going to nordvpn.com slash drjones using my link in the description down below or putting in code drjones at checkout. Now, let's get back to the video. Your answer? True. A typical full-term uterus contains two to six cups of amniotic fluid. This is technically correct, but I find it so weird that they worded it in cups. Two to six cups of fluid. What a bizarre way to put that. I would expect it to usually be in either ounces or milliliters, usually milliliters because it's a medical thing and we use metric system most of the time, but I digress. Average amniotic fluid is around three to 600 milliliters and normal is anywhere from about 200 milliliters to 1500 milliliters. So six cups, if you must, is getting to the higher end of normal, but is definitely still a normal amount of fluid. We're two miles from the hospital. Oh no, not now. From the gas pump thing and the car is blinking. Yes. I'm gonna pull over. Okay. 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 That's fine. <laughs> as a habitual let it get to the bottom on E and stay there as long as possible, this is a really great argument in my husband's favor for filling up when you have a quarter tank left. Don't any of you ever tell him that I said that. I come out and I started pumping the gas. She did the gas pumping too, my gosh. So, why is her mom not helping out? And all of a sudden, oh! ah! it's like a waterfall of, you know, fluid in my pants. I was just completely shocked and confused. And at this point, did we go, maybe this is labor or were we still not sure what was happening? Now I'm starting to get scared. Yeah, I would imagine. He gets back in the car. <laughs> Once I got really looking at it, and it hit me like lightning <laughs> that the water broke. <laughs> I was just believing, but it had to be that. <laughs> her mom figured it out. I love that. She's like, what else could it be? Obviously, her water broke. <laughs> she just looked totally surprised. She's like, but I'm not pregnant. <laughs> I couldn't wrap my head around the fact because how would you not know? You know, that, that's not possible, really. I just had my period! I said, I can't be pregnant. I've had my period. <laughs> Judging by how many people go on this show, I will venture to say it is possible. And I think watching some of these shows, we understand why. And then sometimes we go, yeah, no, I don't know. It's, I'm confused. And the cramps started getting very quickly stronger. And they're still not going to call and ask somebody to take her? I realized that it was possible that I was going to be having a baby. Can you imagine how scary that would be? Like it all of a sudden just hits you. You're like, yep, I think you're right. I think it's a baby. Labor, a woman in labor. Just relax. They put me in this big room and they're like checking the heartbeat. I did feel guilty that if there was anything wrong with the baby, it would have been my fault because I had no prenatal care. Obligatory moment for every didn't know I was pregnant video. You do the best you can with the information that you have. You took a pregnancy test. It was negative. 
you felt like you were having your period still, you didn't know. You can't let that guilt continue with you. You have to give yourself permission to move forward knowing that you did the best you could with the information that you had. I examined her. She was already three centimeters. Doctor, her last baby was a section. Okay, notify the OR. Okay. Because her last baby was delivered by C-section, Christy is prepped for the same procedure. You don't have to have a C-section if you had a C-section last time. You can have a VBAC or vaginal birth after cesarean. This would be a situation where I would be a little bit hesitant because we don't know the gestational age, the size of the baby. We don't know anything about her history. She's had no monitoring during the pregnancy, so it might make me a little more nervous. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it would be ideal in a situation where the person can be appropriately counseled and make an informed decision, which is quite hard to do when you're actively in labor with a baby that you didn't know was in your uterus. Just minutes later, doctors deliver Christy's baby, a seven pound boy. The next thing I know, I hear him crying and the doctor's like, he's fine, he's healthy. They have an actual cesarean delivery tray open, although it's interesting that they're not using any of their instruments at the point that they've gotten to where they're delivering the baby. Maybe they have special powers and they can do their C-sections without any instruments. That yellow tray is generally what they put sharps in. Things that they have in that yellow tray are supposed to be sterile on a sterile field and they're not sterile. They're still in the package. In real life, you wouldn't be able to put those things, which are suture packets, into that yellow tray because that would break your sterility. But otherwise, quite similar to what we would use in real life, the one that has the white puffy thing on the end is a what we call a sponge on a stick, which is a Raytec or sponge on the end of a ring forcep and is used to clear your field if there's blood in the way. Way over on the right side of the table is a bladder blade because the bladder and the uterus are side by side. So we push the bladder out of the way so that we don't cause an injury. It helps us see the place where we need to make the incision on the uterus more easily. He was a little bit early, but his lungs were fully developed. He was doing great, and uh, I was very happy. I think the best moment was when I actually held him for the first time. I wonder how early he was. A seven pound boy. That's pretty average, at least close to term weight. I'm completely in love with him from the time I held him. <laughs> baby. I was just Oh. Christy Look names her baby boy he Christian. Is. Oh my gosh, those little lips. Can't handle it. I always find it fascinating when they say they immediately fell in love with the baby. I love that people can do that, but I also always try to add in when we're having these discussions that that's not always how people feel when a baby's born, even if they knew they were pregnant. For me personally, when my babies came out, I loved them. I would have done anything for them, but I didn't feel that like starry-eyed love. It took me a little while. I needed to get to know them. And that doesn't mean you aren't bonding with your baby. It doesn't mean you're depressed or that there's something wrong with you or you'll be a bad parent. It just, for some people, you want to get to know them. I always worry when they say things like that, especially in these didn't know I was pregnant scenarios, that people will be like, I, that didn't happen to me. What's wrong with me? And it's fine. You don't have to have that starry eyed love to have a really wonderful and just as equally perfect connection to your baby. That was a super sweet video. I'm so glad that she and baby Christian are both okay. If you're new here and you'd like to subscribe, we would love to have you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. I'll see you next Monday. Don't forget to check out NordVPN, our sponsor for the month.